Hello, happy Fat Tuesday. Welcome to uh, Closing the Distance. I'm Jeff Myers, one of the pastors here at Roswell Presbyterian Church. I'm here with Jeff Luce with his fresh haircut, man, looking good. For those who are just listening on the podcast, you're really missing out uh, <laughs> on, on his beautiful visage. Um, <laughs> no, Jeff, thank you so much for being with us. I want you to know that of all the closing the distances I hear about that people appreciate, one of yours that I or one of the ones I hear the most about was when you came on early on, I think in the pandemic, and we talked about ways to, um, you know, to kind of go through quarantine and uh, and uh, all that we experienced in the pandemic. So thank you uh, for sharing with us and giving us your wisdom again today. Oh, that's nice to hear, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad we fixed all that COVID and pandemic stuff when we talked a few years back. So <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, and it's kind of, I just realized it's kind of funny, you know, a lot of the things we talked about back then had to do with loneliness, which was what the um, uh, sermon was on uh, about on Sunday. And, and we're again talking about it. We didn't resolve all the loneliness. <laughs> Who knew that loneliness is still an issue uh, in our world, even outside of quarantine and the pandemic? Um, for folks that may not know you, give us kind of what are your qualifications? What do you do? Um, why am I asking you to be uh, talking about yes. uh, this? Topic? Yeah, other than, you know, we're some of the last Jeffs around. You know, there's no one younger than us named Jeff. Yeah, I was going to say, no one gets named Jeff anymore no, it's kind of sad it's kind of, it's one of my obsessions it's like i'm trying <laughs> to find someone younger than me named jeff but not met him yet um, no i'm a um therapist i'm a licensed professional counselor master's level therapist um uh my primary role and job is i'm a corporate guy i work for a big corporation get to do a lot of interesting uh, corporate activity but it's connected to mental health and then i have a, a part-time kind of weekend practice where Typically, I just help a handful of guys. I only work with guys. Um, and where I'm at now, kind of specializing and kind of honing in, is I end up helping just a handful of guys at a time, working through a lot of midlife crisis stuff. So it's uh, sometimes the blind leading the blind, right? I'm a middle-aged dude. Um, uh, but we, we have a lot of uh, good times and, and just kind of help a handful of guys at a time in that regard. Yeah. There it is. Yep. Well, you're, I mean, you're, I mean, honestly, you're somebody that I regularly turn to, to get kind of your input on um, the world, the issues that people are experiencing. Do you think loneliness is a problem for people today that you uh, witness? I do. Yeah. I mean, especially the guys I work with, but also, you know, in my social circle, I see it. Absolutely. And, you know, even connected Jeff to the um, conversation we had couple years ago now right one of the things i'm noting and noticing is there's a real inertia effect where people that are maybe more prone to isolation prone to kind of get getting in that kind of space there's a bit of inertia and people are kind of still in a way coming out of that that space that mindset kind of reconnecting re-engaging and it's hard for a lot of people so i see it yeah absolutely big problem you know, and one of the th things I think we kind of may have to define our yeah. terms because what is loneliness? Because we seem to be more connected in many different ways than ever in human history. And yet people are feeling lonely. What What do you think loneliness is? Yeah, it's a good question. And maybe like the analogy I, well, I kind of like parse it out solitude versus loneliness. And I think about like the, the downstream or output of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I'm someone who needs like a decent amount of solitude to recharge. Right. So the output of that is like, okay, I'm charged up. I can go like my worst space is like a party with like 50 people. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not my, not my space. It's like, it, I always joke, like as a, as a therapist, like we're trained to go the opposite direction of like what normal people are, you know, trained to go into, right? Like uh -huh. you say something weird. And as a therapist, I'm like, Oh, tell me more. <laughs> Polite society. I'm just, it's just not my, not my space. Um, so I think of like solitude and, and loneliness as like the output and the outcome. Right. And so, 
someone needing and wanting solitude to recharge, to regenerate energy. That's the output or the outcome of that. Whereas like loneliness, especially when it gets to like a problematic level. I mean, everybody experiences loneliness, right? But when I would say it crosses into like a problem threshold is, is when you're truly like isolated from everyone else, like the feeling of loneliness is really getting in the way of you living the life that you want to be living or that you feel you should be living. So that's really how I parse it out or differentiate it. Yeah. Yeah. That's helpful. Um, it's interesting. People may not know this. I want to bring this in uh, to the sermon on Sunday. I just didn't, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to put a period on it at some point. Um, but uh, solitude is a spiritual discipline in the Christian tradition that mm -hmm. we are called. I mean, you, you think about Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days and fasting. You think about the apostle Paul after his conversion, a couple of years of solitude, um, uh, Moses, you know, this burning bush experience, solitude. There is a call to be alone. But one of the things I quoted from Tertullian, who uh, was a great um, uh, early church theologian and pastor, and he said, a Christian alone is no Christian. And at the time, there was, you know, people would convert, and then they'd go into the wilderness, they called the desert mothers and fathers, and they would just spend all their time by themselves praying and fasting, as if that was the um, apex of the Christian life, that, is that, that was the goal. And I think you do a great, your definition is that's not the goal. That's, that's a process and experience to get to the goal of Christian community. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people pull back um, from entering into Christian community and, and experience loneliness um, and get stuck in it? Yeah, I think, well, this, that could be like a, super long answer so i'll try to give my shortest yeah best answer on that yeah, for sure um in kind of my work and kind of the way i think about the the work that i do a lot of the problems and challenges and issues that people kind of need to end up working through are the result of like relationship drama strife pain trauma right mm -hmm. and so there's a little bit of like a, a natural or I think like a lot of people who may not be struggling with loneliness like think of loneliness or see people being lonely and think like you know just stop it like what are you doing like <laughs> stop doing that thing you know mm -hmm. I, I do think a lot of the kind of pull toward isolation pull toward being alone and then kind of ending up in a lonely state uh, has a lot to do with you know we've been burned right people have been burned hurt you know, all of that. And so there's a kind of like adaptive component or an adaptive piece to like isolating, right? It's like safe, it's safer. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to avoid a lot of pain and all of that. But there's obviously kind of the downside, which is what you talked about on Sunday and what we're talking about here, right? The, mm -hmm. Now I'm not living the life that I want to and it's not fulfilling. Um, so that's, that's how I would kind of like characterize the, the pull or the kind of gravitational force of loneliness for some people it's really interesting um that so there's this narrative in especially like in christian circles and religious circles that uh people are becoming less participative in um in religious organizations in america they're becoming less religious um but I just read a stat from the Barna group that said since 1994, participation in small groups has jumped from 12 to 20 percent, which I thought was <laughs> fascinating because um, that's not the narrative you hear out, uh, at least in my world. It's like, oh, it's a kind of a doom uh, scenario of people getting more isolated. Small groups and, you know, Bible studies are one of the ways that we can connect with other people what are some of the ways that you think are help healthy for people to engage in um in community and fellowship especially in the christian uh context yeah i well first of all i totally agree like in my experience in my personal life like small groups sunday school some of those smaller settings are where i've formed a lot of my best friendships and relationships it's where i've had a lot of um kind of spiritual awakening moments or i've been like presented with something from 
you know, just some random person in, in that group or in that class that made me think about something in a new way. So I think, I think that's a, I think that's great. And I totally resonate with that. Um, kind of a second part or a second answer, I guess, Jeff is, um, I think sometimes when we talk about loneliness or when people think about kind of their lonely state, like what, one of my like themes, right. In my work is like, let's take the serious meter down from a 10 and, and turn it down to a two, right? Like, like, let's like, let's just be like, let's be calm for a minute. Let's take a breath. Let's relax a little bit. Yes. Like you're lonely, right? Like, let's be dumb guys about it for a second. Okay. Right? What do you like to do? And then like start listing that and like people start listing that, like, let's start doing that. Like, let's like, like flip the script on the inertia piece. Um, so it could be anything. And then sometimes people are in such a state of like loneliness, isolation, you know, approaching like a despair state that um, sometimes they don't have an answer to that. Like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know. And then that's when I'm like, well, let's stay kind of on the serious level too. And then like, think about like, who are people that you could be close to or are close to? What do they like to do? <laughs> do that with them, right? So um, that seems to be actually helpful for a lot of people is like, let's like not try to solve the world's loneliness problem. Let's like figure out what you like to do. Do more of that with other people. So that's yeah, it's like kind of Captain Obvious stuff, but it ends up being helpful. But sometimes, yeah, I mean, sometimes the best answer is the most obvious, but we get so blinded, we can't, yes. we can't see, you know, it's like the, you know, the, the fish who's in water and yep. a fisher walks along, the fisherman walks along and says, well, how's the water boys? And he says, well, what the hell is water? <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's actually been a real helpful intervention with a lot of the guys I work with, like start small and start yeah. today like think about it from an inertia kind of movement <laughs> perspective and just start moving i mean some of the things I, I don't know in your experience but i've seen like crossfit running clubs <laughs> um you know uh book groups uh like that counts like you doesn't have to be like some you know tr you know crazy uh yeah well let, like let's just say like if if like would you rather get a text from me saying like, Hey, you want to go hiking on Saturday? Or would you rather get a text from me saying like, Hey, I'm looking to solve my loneliness problem. And I need you like, it's like, you know, you can just like do the things. Right. So yeah, there's, there's a million things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you, uh, when you're talking with folks of kind of in with loneliness, what are, do you, what are some of the tools you, you kind of help, do you want people to cultivate um, in order to build and make meaningful relationships? Obviously you start, what do you enjoy? What do you like? But building on that, how do you, how do you kind of get out of that loneliness and build skills and tools to connect meaningfully with other people? Yeah. Uh, there's probably like a handful of angles that I would hit that from, or that I do hit that from. I think, especially for folks that um, I worked with, but I think this is like generally true that have been stuck in this space for a long time. Like it's just kind of like they are way out of practice and out of, they've not been doing any reps on this kind of stuff. Right. And so again, from a, like, let's break it down a little bit further. I literally say like, like I, I tell people often actually like, go home, Google, like how to be a better conversationalist. Like there's like a million like blog posts, YouTube videos, like, like do that. You're out of practice. You're out of reps. Let's not like, let's not ca characterize or categorize this as like something's like massively wrong with you. You're out of practice. It's all, it's all good. It's okay. Like, it's like, yeah, I haven't done sit-ups in a while. I got to start with three and then go to six. Like it's, it's okay. Right. Yep. Um, so that's, that's actually one angle that seems to be, again, pretty helpful for folks is like start small, break it down. Yeah. I, I think I can't, it was some years ago, you know, I, I worked with a lot of young adults who were often, um, the personality type, they were introverts. They, you know, it was a lot of engineers, science kind of based folks. And, 
and they spent a lot of time by themselves and they just didn't know how to like create uh you know like have conversations so we like literally like came up with a list of questions you can ask somebody else just oh. like bare bones oh where'd you grow up yeah um what tell me about your family uh uh do you have a favorite sports team you know like just these just basic questions that help people get the conversation going and 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 once it's off to the races that's how you build relationships yep and i think do you think men have a a more difficult time building meaningful relationships let's say than women uh yes and no like i think like fundamentally no but like from a acculturation perspective absolutely yes like like we're kind of like um, like a cultured to like minimize vulnerability, maximize strength. Like your, I thought your your um, in your sermon was pretty funny. The kind of Lone Ranger theme, right? Like this, it, it is true. Like that is the ideal, right? The Lone Ranger. Like like that's it. Oh, someday. Like I mean, yeah. So I think there's an acculturation piece. Um, I think it's changing some, but I think it's absolutely still. A part of it like being vulnerable and kind of like open about like what might really be going on with you or the struggles you might be having or like even saying like hey i'm I'm in a bad spot and i don't need anything from you other than like will you just call me every week for the next month because i think that's how long this bad time is gonna go kind of thing like we're not like dialed in to do that but those are i, I mean that, that's actually one of the main things like with guys i'm working with who are feeling this way like who can you call Tell them, like, I like this is my guy to guy thing. Tell your guy friend, I need you to call me once a week and just say, Are you good? Like, how are you doing? How's it going? Like, this struggle you're going through. Um, that's that's a good kind of intervention. Like, that's a helpful, like, thing. And, like, and I, and I, like, I always give like a money back guarantee on that. I promise you, the person you reach out to is going to do it. They might not be great at it but they will be honored as a friend that you kind of reached out to them in that way. And then that will kind of actually will help you through this time. Yes. So. I love that. And it's so like, again, that's takes a level of humility of vulnerability to say, Hey man, yeah. I, I need you. <laughs> yeah. I had that conversation with, I had a buddy. He didn't call me for, I was going through a horrible time. He didn't, he like ghosted me for like nine months and finally we reconnected. And I was like, Hey man, that wasn't cool. And like, I really needed you, but let's, we're going to, I never want to talk about those nine months again. <laughs> we're going to leave behind us, but I need you in my life. We're friends and let's move forward. And yeah. that it took a lot for me to kind of be like, you really hurt my feelings. Yeah, you let me down, man. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to hold it against you, but let's, I want you to know I was hurt. I needed you, but let's go forward and, and build on where we're, uh, but I think I think as guys like it's not like a natural thing to th it's almost like we're like naturally tuned into like you know if Jeff really needed me he'd probably let me know or like I don't even know what I would say who am I to like say like I, and like it's scary like I know he's going through it like ugh, like and so I I think like again like bringing it down like way low on the serious level like just I'm struggling I need you to reach out to me the next three days in a row like don't yes. screw this up <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think it's so tough like so I, and i think we have to find things to do that like bring us together that are like not awkward like i think and i, I hate to be gendered about it but i think women you know oftentimes you can go hey they can go let's go grab coffee and they connect and have coffee. but like if I call a lot of people and say, hey, do you want to go grab a cup of coffee and talk about our feelings? They're going to be like, uh, I mean, I can do that with you, Jeff, but like yeah. a lot of people are going to be like, uh, no, thanks. <laughs> Very often. But like, like a number of years ago, I got, I, I got tickets to the Atlanta Hawks because guys would love to go to a basketball game. And so I, and so it's not awkward. We, we sit shoulder to shoulder. We cheer a little bit. We talk and we, we build friendships we, you know yeah. in meaningful ways but and so i think finding those things that we enjoy to do that we can do with others is very important uh to cultivating meaningful relationships
I totally agree. I, I so I'm on the this will be a plug. Okay, this is yes. the paid advertisement part of closing the distance. Oh, this no, is I'm not, this is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Hang up. <laughs> no, um, I I'm on the um I'm on the Roswell Rapids Adult Swim Team. Oh, so this is something that I that I do every summer. It's like one of my favorite things I do all year. It's like from May to August, and like it's like. Something I did growing up, I hadn't swam in like probably 15-ish, maybe more years, right? Saw it in the Roswell, like whatever, Parks and Rec thing, signed up. And I've been doing it six years every summer. And like this has become like a kind of community for me. I've got I've made great friends there. And like to your point, it's something I wanted to do in the back of my mind. And then what I've realized now is like the benefit of it is like it's with all these other people. yes. I'm wearing a speedo doing it, but that's vulnerable. That's because, vulnerable. I was thinking about that. That's why I thought of it like the vulnerable. <laughs> the, could, you, yeah. could you give us pictures? Could we? Uh... Uh, I I actually could for a, for a small. That will be the paid part. So <laughs> <laughs> email Jeff Loose for a speedo. <laughs> Do not email me for speedo pictures. You will get no speedo pictures. <laughs> amazing um that's so that's so interesting and i think a number of years ago i read a book called what was it called the chairs are where the people sit and it's like how to live work and play in the city and it's this guy and it's a fantastic book they're like one page chapters and he just says you know like if if if, if you move to a new city how do you meet people he says well fine find a group of people that do what you like to do and he says you know th think about it and then and then um and then engage and he's always he was always starting new clubs about just to gather people and i think it was for him it was outside his comfort zone but he knew he had to do that in order to connect with people and i think that is like joining a, a swim team is so is so key well i think like i've even like when i'm I've met people like in Roswell here that like, I find out they're into gardening. I'm like an amateur gardener. Like I'm not really good at it, but you I'm like, a lot of I'm, hobbies, Jeff. I got yeah, a lot of, I got a lot of hobbies. I got, I got, it's not, like, yeah, it's not a big garden. I'm not like, I'm not farming here. Okay. It's like, I grow some cilantro. Okay. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, and I, I've met some people and I'm like, you want to just like, like check out each other's gardens sometimes. I mean, it sounds weird, but like, I'm telling you, like, if that's something you're into, like, that is like, oh my gosh, like the best. It is what like- What fertilizer are you using? You know? It is like, oh, check out my compost bin. Like, Show check me your out. spade, man. Yeah, like this is where I got asparagus going. Like, it's like actually legitimately fun. I, I was thinking about one thing when you were talking, Jeff, is the, um, I'm like a big, uh, I've been in the suburbs here. I've been in Roswell for over 20 years. I love it. I love living here. Um, I think there is a kind of um, undervalued or under kind of accounted for component of living in the suburbs, which like the degree of difficulty is just higher with regard to like connection. Like it's just like physically harder than like when maybe we were in college and you lived in a dorm and you like had like 19 people you could hang out with at the drop of a hat, right? Or a more kind of like, it, it's just the degree of difficulty is higher. Typically, unless you live in like a close neighborhood, like you got to get in the car or you got to plan, like it's just, it's harder. And I think because there are a lot of like pluses of living out here in the burbs, mm -hmm. like. I kind of like account for it, but I think it's something that people should account for. Like it is harder. Like you're not crazy for feeling like, man, this is harder than I thought it would be or whatever. Like, yeah, it's harder. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And just acknowledge it. And yep. it's going to be a little, a little more difficult. Well, what role do you think the church, let's say an RPC can explicitly minister to folks who are lonely and be a source of community and fellowship? And yeah, I think ways? I think our, I think we do a I think we do a nice job of it. Uh, just like creating um, environments and opportunities to like grow, sure, and learn, but really to connect, right? Like I always think of like some of the probably the most impactful spiritual moments of my life, or kind of the most connecting moments were those more kind of like serendipitous moments, like the things that weren't like heavily planned out or like programmed out, and it's like oh, like this thing just happened. And then I connected with this guy and all of a sudden we're 
you know, off to the races. Right. And so I think just like, it's like a creation of some core conditions that I think like, I think we already do it. And then let's just double down on it, you know, like let's yes. figure out what, what that looks like or what the next season of that looks like. Right. Or how do we grow and tweak and change and all of that? Yeah. Well, and to that end, I would encourage folks who maybe feel lonely, maybe um, want to connect with folks. I mean, we've got fly fishing groups. We, we have running groups. We have uh, books and studies, Bible studies. Um, come to worship. You know, I, I always kind of crack up because at a, a church of our size uh, and with like four services, you come to worship. A lot of new folks, they're like, well, everybody in, in here has has been around for 20 years. <laughs> you know, it, it you know, is a Jeff Lewis. And I'm often reminded, no, everybody in your pew is also in their first month being here at RPC. And you got to like extend yourself and take a risk and introduce yourself. And that's how, that's how it happens. Um, yep. And I, if for folks who are listening, reach out to me, reach out to a pastor. We will connect you uh, to folks that you, that you have shared interests that you can serve together. Um, you can come alongside and mutually support each other. So we definitely want that to be, uh, one of our ministries here at RPC. Um, okay, so we're coming to our end of our time here. Uh, we're we're going to be looking at uh, famous prayers from the Christian tradition during the season of Lent. I'll remind folks, tomorrow's Ash Wednesday. We have a noon and 7 o'clock service. Now, you, you're a big prayer. I know that. Do you have any favorite prayers that you like to pray? Uh, like, I... I... I think it's like the prayer of, of St. Francis. Oh yeah. Like the, is that the instrument of peace one? Is that like, yeah, yeah. We're going to yeah, look yeah. at that one. I like That's that one. one. That one's yeah. a lit pastor Jeff. <laughs> That's lit man. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I do. I really like that prayer a lot. Like that. This a, is that's a fantastic prayer. Well, we're going to talk about that one. We'll do the serenity prayer written by Reinhold Niebuhr. Give kind of, um, the background on that this Sunday we'll do the Lord's prayer. We'll, we've got some really great prayers, some um, mainstream more, some more little um, uh, people might be unfamiliar with. So I look forward to uh, uh, covering those with folks over the coming days. I'll remind folks Ash Wednesday is tomorrow uh, noon uh, service outside the sanctuary on Mimosa side. We'll also have a seven o'clock uh, service in the sanctuary and we'll be live streaming that as well invite people to come. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to share your wisdom with us and experience. I appreciate your friendship, your ministry uh, here, both at the church and also in the world as you are uh, in your work with your family and um, in so many ways. All right, Jeff, thanks for closing the distance with us this week. Thanks, Jeff. See ya. All right, brother. See you soon. Bye-bye.